The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> on King! On your husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Spring was the most welcome season of the year in the Yukon. The long days of sunshine melted the deep snow and released the creeks and rivers from their icy prisons. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police had put his dog team away for the summer and was following the trail into Selkirk on horseback. Before him ran his big lead dog, King, who never left him winter or summer. When suddenly a shot rang from the woods to the left of the trail, oh, Sergeant Preston trouble. wheeled his horse around and started through the trees in the direction of the sound. This way, King. Come on, brother. <laughs> You're having some trouble? Oh, oh boy. Where'd you come from? I guess I was so mad I couldn't hear your horse. I heard a shot and thought I ought to investigate. It was me who did the shooting. I just shot over his head to scare him, though. I just caught a half-breed setting some traps to catch my beavers. Your beavers? Yeah. I'm Lem Jenkins. I live over here in the creek with my partner, Josh Button. We're prospectors, and our claim includes part of the creek that has a beaver dam in it. I made friends with the little critters, and I ain't going to stand for nobody trapping them. I see. I'm Sergeant Preston. Well, glad to know you, Sergeant. Uh, why don't you come over to the cabin and meet Josh? It's about time for some dinner, and he's a good cook. That's a good idea. I'd like to meet your partner. Uh, just walk along beside your horse. All right. One fella. Mind if I take my dog in with me? Bring him along. Josh and me like animals. Come on, King. <laughs> we got company for dinner, Josh. This is Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Well, howdy, Sergeant. How are you, Josh? You sure you have enough dinner for me? More than enough. Them and me spend most of our time hunting. We're glad to have someone help us eat up all the game we get. Well, sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. I'll have dinner in a jiffy. Well, that's Don't quite a collection of guns you have. Yep. Yeah, just as Josh says, we like to hunt. That's why we like this country. <laughs> yeah, we just got back from a three-day hunt yesterday. Oh? That's why you're getting wild goose for dinner. <laughs> We're going out again tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to join us, Sergeant. Oh, nothing I'd like better, but I'm on duty. Aren't you afraid to leave your claim so much? Oh, no. We uh, need enough out of it without working too hard. Well, now the summer's here, we got to start panning gold again, I guess. You do any winter mining? Oh, <laughs> that's too much work. We hunt and play cribbage all winter. <laughs> I got so far ahead of Josh that he never will beat me now. <laughs> well, I'll catch him and I'll pass him by the end of summer. <laughs> well, I guess we're about set to eat. I got a nice piece of caribou steak for that dog of yours, Sergeant. He can eat the same time we do. <laughs> The bank at Selkirk, where most of the prospectors brought their gold, was empty when Sergeant Preston entered it later that day. The clerk greeted him cordially. Hello there, Preston. Haven't seen you in a long time. How are you, Bill? You've had quite a lot of excitement around here since I saw you last. You mean all the holdups in the mountains? We sure have. Do you have any ideas who might be doing it? Well, all the robberies have happened in this territory, so we figure it's someone who lives near Selkirk. The inspector suggested I check with you about people who've made large gold deposits lately. There have been a lot of people doing that. Lots of the miners have come in with their winter supply. Nobody suspicious that I could tell you about. Well, maybe I could check over the names anyway, Bill. Sure, I'll give them to you. Got a whole book full of them. Suppose you heard about Dirk Clancy being robbed last night. Yes, they told me about it at headquarters. Said someone shot at him, too. I haven't seen him yet. Here's the book, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. The deposits are listed. 
ones for the last few months begin on this page. Thanks, Bill. Well, here's Clancy now, Sergeant. Mm. Uh, we were just talking about you being held up last night. Yeah, sure was. Took two bags of dust. Just a second, Clancy. Uh, Bill, these two men here, Lem Jenkins and Josh Button, are these figures right? Mm, yep. They brought all that gold in here a while back. I guess it was what they mined during the winter. They didn't do any mining during the winter. They didn't? Well, how do you know? I've talked to them. Hey, now that you mention them old codgers, it could have been them that held me up. Well, I thought you told headquarters you didn't see them clearly. Well, it was kind of dark, but, well, they, they weren't young, I know that. You know how you can tell by the way a man walks. Uh -huh. Sure, you can tell that even if you didn't see them close up. And they seem so harmless. They sure brought in a lot of gold for two old men who don't do any winter mining. <laughs> They must be panning gold night and day. Are there many gold claims on the same creek? There have been lots of men started them below the place Lem and Josh are situated, but they didn't get enough gold to stay there. Well, it's a lead anyway. Thanks a lot, Bill. Oh, uh, by the way, Clancy, just where were you held up? In the mountain pass, about three miles from Josh and Lem's place. I see. Well, I'll be seeing you boys again. Come on, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston hitched his horse to a tree beside the trail the next morning, and with King at his heels, walked quietly toward the cabin of Josh and Lee. As he neared the clearing, he heard an explosion. I don't know what that was. Sounded like dynamite. Come on, boy, let's have a look. Got everything set, Josh? Sure have. Let the water run down, Sam. Watch it. Go fast. I've got the shovels and pans ready. Well, boys, what's going on here? Sergeant Preston. I thought you said you protected those beavers of yours. The idea of blowing up their dam. Well, I guess he's caught us red-handed, Lem. Suppose we'll have to let him in on a secret. Could you promise you won't tell a single soul, Sergeant? Well, I won't tell unless it's necessary, Lem. Well, we don't ever hurt the beaver, Sergeant. We chased them all out of here before we blowed the dam. Well, why did you do it? Well, uh, you see, Josh and me are pretty lazy, except for hunting. I rather gathered that last night. I guess you noticed we weren't panning gold or mining. Yes, I did. Well, you see, this creek comes down the mountain. Ours is about the first claim it gets to on level ground. I see. The beavers have built a dam right across it and backed the water up. A couple of times, they almost stopped it from running. Lem and me couldn't pan any gold out of it that way. No, of course you couldn't. We decided to blow up the dam last summer, in spite of the fact that we sort of liked the little critters. <laughs> when we did it, we found a big deposit of gold-filled gravel uh -huh. right at the bottom of the dam where the water was deepest. I see. When the creek was dammed up, the gold sank to the bottom and the water flowed over the top of the dam. Is that it? You hit the nail right on the head, Sergeant. It was no trouble at all to get the dust nuggets out. The gravel was almost pure gold. Well, but the funniest thing about it all was that after we got what we wanted out, them little beasts went right back and built the dam again. Yes, they always do that. If their dam's destroyed, they build it back again in the same place. Well, we didn't know they'd do that. You could have knocked us down with a light breeze. We got up one morning, and there was a dam built up again, just the way it was before. They always build their dams at night, if possible. <laughs> well, it sure fitted in with our scheme. Lem and me decided we'd just let them do our gold panning for us while we hunted and played cribbage. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, we used a little dynamite, let the water run off, and there's our gold, ready for the taking. Quite a smart idea. Well, the water's pretty shallow now. I'll get some of that gravel and show you, Sergeant. We could see, Sergeant, why we can't tell nobody. Josh and I like to go hunting for days at a time, and there's nothing to prevent someone coming in here and dynamiting while we're away. I can see what you mean. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Well, here's a pan of our pay dirt, Preston. Take a look. What? It's yellow with gold. Do you wonder we chase people away when they want to trap our little paddle tail miners? I should think you would. And now I'll tell you why I came today. You two were uh, under suspicion. What? Suspicion of what? The robberies that have taken place in the mountains for the last few weeks. Dirk Clancy was held up last night. Dirk Clancy? Where? Coming through the mountain pass about three miles from here, oh, long about midnight. Someone stole two bags of gold dust from him. Where did he get the gold dust? Dirk Clancy hasn't any claim. Uh -huh. Maybe he got it with somebody's crooked gambling. Gambling? Well, he ain't much good. There's lots of people I'd feel sorrier for than Dirk. I'm going to ask a favor of you two. Uh, sure, Sergeant. Anything you say. I'm going to pretend that I still suspect you for a week or so. Do you mind? Well, so long as you don't ruin our reputations altogether. Oh, I won't do that. But it may help me catch the real criminal. <laughs> Lem.
Later in the day, Sergeant Preston again entered the bank at Selkirk. Dirk Clancy was deep in conversation with Bill, the bank clerk. Hello, Bill. Oh, I was looking for you, Clancy. They said I could find you here. Hello, Sergeant. You want me for something? Just a few things I want to check. You said it was uh, just about midnight that these two men held you up? I guess it was about then. Did you happen to notice whether either of the men had a beard? Josh and Len seem very likely suspects, but I'd like to have a little more to go on. Josh has a long gray beard, hasn't he? Yes. It's an easy thing to see. Hey, do you know, come to think of it, one of them men did have a beard. Uh-huh. The one that stuck me up. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. That's all I wanted to know. I guess they're the ones who did it all right. I checked on them today, and they do very little mining or panning. They had to get that gold somewhere. But you can't just arrest them without any evidence. I have a plan, Bill. I'm going to see to it that they find out about the big gold shipment due here day after tomorrow. Then I'm going to follow every move they make until the gold gets here. Sounds like a good idea. The pack train has to come through the same mountain pass that you did, Clancy. It's a perfect place for a holdup. I'll camp near their cabin without letting them see me and watch them for the next three days. Well, good luck, Sergeant. Sure hope you catch them at it. Well, thanks for all the help, boys. I'll let you know what happened. <laughs> well, it's nice to know the Mountie won't be around when that pack train comes through. Clancy, maybe we'd better not try it with Preston in town. It's dangerous. Ah, don't be a fool. The setup is perfect. Preston will be watching those two old men all night. We'll have horses waiting. Get a full night's start over the border before he even finds out the robbery was done. Nobody can catch us. And with what we've already got, plus what's coming on that pack train, we won't ever have to do a job the rest of our lives. Two men waited behind some huge boulders as the four-mule pack team wound slowly down the mountain trail. As it neared the big rocks, one of the men sprang forward. Get your hands up and keep them there. Never mind talking. You and your partner get over there against that rock. Now, wait. I'll take those guns before you get off that mule. Now yours, mister. My partner's covering both of you, so no funny business. There. Now, walk over to those rocks. Uh, You ain't going to shoot us in the back. Get over there, I said. Bill, get those mules turned around while I take care of these two. Stand by your order. Hold you. Hey, what the... No, you don't. Get him, King. No, stop him. Take him away. No, my arm, help. Hold on your gun, Bill. Yes, I, I will shoot. Get over here, Miss Clancy. All right, King. Hold me, boy. Get up. Oh. How do you sure arrived in this time? I've been following this man for two days. You, you've you been following me? You didn't know it, but you've never been out of my sight. But, but you said you were tailing Josh and Lamb. That's quite an old trick, Bill. As long as you thought I was suspicious of Josh and Lem, you were sure I wouldn't watch you. As a matter of fact, I didn't suspect you, Bill. No, take this dog away. You uh, shouldn't have tried to shoot me, Clancy. King's trained to watch that. I uh, think you're pretty smart, don't you, Preston? Oh, I didn't have to be, Clancy. Not to figure out what you were trying to do. You changed your story from not seeing the men who robbed you to seeing a beard and noticing the way one of them walked. At midnight, in a dark mountain pass. That didn't make sense. He shouldn't have said anything. I got together, you two. I'm taking you back to jail. Watch them, King. copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.